why did you decide to uh, leave the bureaucracy and join the party okay i decided because i was inspired by the chief minister the way he was into public service and it was not a grand plan or something for me to enter i would say that uh, one year back if you had asked me hmm. are you going to join politics i would have firmly said a no and if somebody has my batchmates will laugh if uh, they 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 know that i have resigned and i have joined a party <laughs> because it was not in my plan at all one year 8 9 months back i started touring the districts and i saw the love and affection of people it was very humbling i thought that i should not be bound by bureaucratic rules in reaching out to the people and that is the only reason why i resigned and joined inspired by the chief minister but i had no plans whatsoever to join politics no but plans the, the detractors will say it's a fixed match between bjp and bjd i'm asking you because now you're bjd <laughs> you are not just a bureaucrat no when when bjd is not convinced about something bjd has not gone ahead with uh, bjp hmm. i'll give you two examples one is the farmers bill hmm. we didn't support bjd did not support farmers bill was withdrawn the second one was nrc our chief minister made it very clear it's not good for the country hmm. so there are instances where uh, the chief minister or the bjd has not supported the center in hmm. in uh, in issues which concerns the nation and when bjd or the chief minister is convinced about it they have supported perhaps that was his bad time mr pyarimon mohapatra's bad time he 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 decided to mount it yeah he decided to mount it i would say that only that hmm. it was his bad time he decided to do something like that what happens about uh about his own party because there have been minor rebellions um and you know uh, mr pandian if you see the area around your state you know uh, there have been so many rebellions you know when you see jharkhand when you see uh, bihar you see uh, and you go a little further you see other states also you see madhya pradesh and and the, there have been rebellions within but somehow uh, it doesn't happen here uh, in orissa there have been minor rebellions but uh navin babu seems to have quelled it all along i won't even call them as minor rebellions they are really small micro you can say mm. basically ego issues are super confident or over confident some people trying some mm. mischief if the leader is so popular amongst people if you are going to do a rebellion against him it's going to finish your political career and that is the very reason why in odisha nobody has tried any rebellion he is so popular you have to be there to see how people love him they wait for 4 5 hours just to have a glimpse of him for half a second what kind of love and affection people have for him yeah he is so i don't think anyone dares to do any rebellion there was that one incident yes. remember when you were in you were with London. him in yeah, yeah, yeah you in were London, abroad yeah. and there was that one and uh, at that time there were this in delhi there were a lot of rumors at least and oh the toppling will happen and all that so how was that managed perhaps that was his bad time mr pyarimon mohapatra's bad time he 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 decided to mount it yeah he decided to mount it i would say that only that hmm. it was his bad time he decided to do something like that the chief minister is so popular uh, the day we landed back from london Uh, you know the airport how close it is it yeah. shares a boundary with the chief minister's residence hmm. from the airport to his residence we took two and a half hours or three hours to come reach that was the kind of crowd so much of emotions and he broke all records in the 2014 elections <laughs> after yeah. the after the coup and he this was when in 2000 and uh, you know uh, uh, 12 in May. 2012 May. when there was this talk of this rebellion uh, and uh, there was you know disruption in in many states during that time but yes. here there wasn't yeah they little bit uh, our attempt was made hmm. but uh, the kind of people support i think everyone got scared nobody dared to cross the line yeah so the chief minister became more powerful after that i would say right and um, so do you think that that is the reason why mr modi and mr patnay get get along so well because uh, mr modi is also a former chief minister and he also had this phenomenal support in his own state in gujarat so uh, do you think that uh, that is one of the major reasons why the two of them have a cordial relationship i would see from two three angles the relationship between uh, the honorable prime minister and the chief minister i have seen them interact 
from 2011 onwards I have been with them. One angle is uh, the respect they have for each other. Mm. They respect that people's mandate, that genuine respect which comes when you enjoy the uh, confidence of people. That is the first thing both of them have. If you, if you see both of them meeting for the first time, you will see that as if they are, they are great friends and meeting after a long time, something like that you will feel. Mm. That's the kind of rapport both of them have. The second is their commitment for uh, federalism. How, why I am using this word federalism? It was uh, UPA 2, I remember. They were mm. planning to introduce uh, NCTC. Hmm. National Counter Terrorism yeah. Act or something. Mr. Chidambaram's, Mr. Chidambaram's yeah. dream child. And then they were giving more pass to RPF, Railway Protection Force, hmm. through which they can uh, take action inside a state's territory. All of it were encroaching the state's uh, hmm. jurisdiction, domain. That so NCTC was a stillborn. It yeah. never happened. So, so what happened? Those times, all of them used to talk to each other. Mr. Modi, Madam Jailalitha oh. and uh, uh, Naveen Patnaik. I remember they three decided to walk out of the uh, NDA meeting, uh, NDC, National yeah. Development Council meeting, must be 2011-12. Hmm. All three of them decided we should be the first ones to walk out opposing this uh, NDC. So all three of them came out and gave statements and they met in Gujarat Bhavan and in Tamil Nadu Bhavan like that. So hmm. they had that uh, rapport from that time onwards, hmm. working for a cause, working for federal principles keeping larger interest of country in focus. Right. And do you think that that uh, cooperative federalism in a way uh, that was redefined in 2014 by the uh, center state relations that you have experienced and you have seen between Odisha and the central government? I would say so. I would say so. Hmm. Uh, to a great extent, a lot of things have been ironed out, including the devolution. Even though we say that we have to get more uh, funds, but there has been systemic improvements on that score. But, uh, you know, many would think that uh, that is the cooperative federalism is what the bureaucracy will say or because you have uh, your state has good relations with uh, the center. That's why. But the, the detractors will say it's a fixed match between BJP and BJD. I'm asking you because now you're BJD. <laughs> you are not just a bureaucrat. No, when, when BJD is not convinced about something, BJD has not gone ahead with uh, BJP. I will give you two examples. One is the farmer's bill. Hmm. We didn't support. BJD did not support. Farmer's bill was withdrawn. The second one was NRC. Our chief minister made it very clear it's not good for the country. Hmm. So there are instances where uh, the chief minister or the BJD has not supported the center. In, hmm. in, uh, in issues which concerns the nation and when BJD or the chief minister is convinced about it, they have supported. So how does uh, how does it work? Because um, when it comes to voting, uh, your party consistently votes with the BJP. But on issues, there are times when it doesn't work. Uh, but in spite of that, there seems to be like you know, in other states, uh, one hears about double engine sarkar. Here, it's not double engine sarkar. It's not a BJP government. But somehow, uh, you your state seems to be accruing the benefits of being a double engine sarkar. I think our chief minister believes in not doing politics when elections are not around. He believes strongly in work. Mm. He says that I am in this job to work for the people. Whatever will help the state, whatever will help the people of the state, he will take that decision at that point of time. He is very clear in his uh, approach. Let me come back to you. Otherwise, we are talking about the state and Naveen Babu all the time. But I want to come back to you. Um, You've been a bureaucrat for several years and uh, you uh, had the confidence and you have continued to have the confidence of the most powerful man uh, in the state. Why did you decide to uh, leave the bureaucracy and join the party? Okay. I decided because I was inspired by the chief minister, the way he was into public service. And it was not a grand plan or something for me to enter. I would say that uh, one year back, if you had asked me, hmm. are you going to join politics? I would have firmly said a no. And if somebody has, my batchmates will laugh if uh, they, they, they know that I have resigned and I have joined a party <laughs> because it was not in my plan at all. One year, eight, nine months back, I started touring the districts. And 
I saw the love and affection of people. It was very humbling. I thought that I should not be bound by bureaucratic rules in reaching out to the people. And that is the only reason why I resigned and joined, inspired by the Chief Minister. But I had no plans whatsoever to join politics. No But plans. Uh, over 10 years, you've been touring uh, the state with the Chief Minister, right? So how was this tour different from the earlier tours? So this time I toured on my own. I have always traveled with the Chief Minister. This time I traveled on my own to all 30 districts, 146, 47 constituencies. We took this exercise because uh, after COVID, the footfall in the Chief Minister's grievance cell had reduced. We had uh, closed the grievance cell for two years. The Chief Minister's grievance cell. Okay, why? Because COVID. Uh, so okay. those times we closed and after that it never picked up. People had stopped coming, very less footfall in the grievance cell. Mm -hmm. So the Chief Minister decided that, why don't we reach out? Mm. This is the first time in a state, in any state, the Chief Minister office went and did grievance in a decentralized manner, in uh, constituencies, in blocks. Mm. So with that, when I went there, and uh, I committed to people that your problem, this problem will be solved in 10 days, this problem will be solved in 15 days, this problem will be solved in one month. And uh, the system rose to that occasion and uh, with Honorable Chief Minister's guidance, whatever timelines we had set, it was all being met. It was completely magical. Uh, we had thousands of petitions, all transparent way it has been disposed of. So when I went to the people, when I met them, I realized that there is a strong connect with people. And uh, I thought being a bureaucrat, I won't be able to reach out to them. I have to get out of bureaucracy. Did the, it, it was an inner call. Was it, uh, what, when did you tell Naveen Babu this and was it the first time that this conversation happened between uh, you and Naveen Babu where you said you want to join the party? He also saw the videos and other things of people's interaction and everything. So then both of us discussed and yes, perhaps I should join and maybe I'll be of little help to him whatever way I could, I could be. So he didn't suggest to you before that become part of the party? And so things? we never had a chance to have any discussion like that. I was very clear in what I was doing. I had no, no plans whatsoever. So which is what? Like uh, implementing what he tells you to do? Is that what you were doing? Implementing what he tells to do and also doing value addition. Implementation anyone can do. Okay. You have to add value. You should have the guts to say, sir, this may not work out. And he gave that freedom. He gave that confidence. At any time, if you think something what he is doing may not be helpful to the people or may lead to corruption, he gave the confidence to say, sir, this may not work well, it may not go well. Fine, he will ask me the reasons, we will say. So it, I, have, I have been part of uh, major decisions of the state. Whatever value addition you can do with a clear heart, keeping only people in mind, because I know his mind. He is for the people. And so it's easy to work. You will know from 360 degree, you will, you will have some grassroots idea to tell. So 